Discovering new groups of E. coli bacteria. Escherichia coli, more commonly known as E. coli, is a leading cause of diarrhea-associated hospitalization. However, E. coli does not always cause disease. Alongside thousands of other bacteria species, E. coli lives inside and on the surface of the human body. Numerous different strains of E. coli have been identified by analyzing their genomes. Historically, these strains have been separated into seven different groups, often reflecting their different life strategies, such as whether they cause disease. Understanding the characteristics of E. coli strains and the relationships between them is an important objective for medical research. For example, comparing E. coli genomes could reveal genes involved in antibiotic resistance. In recent research, Dr. David Ussery and his colleagues at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences used a powerful computing method to analyze the largest set of E. coli genomes yet. The team included over 10,000 E. coli genomes. In doing so, they identified 14 different groups, double the number previously recognized, and used these groups to classify a larger set of almost 100,000 E. coli genomes. A key limitation in all genomic studies is the sheer volume of data generated for analysis. Although modern technologies have made studying genomes faster and more efficient than ever before, larger numbers of genomes still require immense processing power to analyze. Dr. Ussery and his colleagues used a computer program called MASH, which streamlines the process of comparing genomes. This new tool could open up new avenues for investigating other large genomic datasets. The MASH program uses an old computer science trick called MinHash from several decades ago. And originally, some of this goes back to the 60s, more recently in the 90s. They developed methods for comparing web pages and images where they would sample small snippets of data. And then call these sketches. So basically what you're doing is you have the large amount of data and you're randomly kind of sampling some things. And, and you collect these, and then you use these to compare to similar files. And, and so you don't have the entire, you know, these huge files, you're just doing small parts of it. So you have a small number, usually hundreds, maybe we do a thousand sketches. And this requires hardly any memory and hardly any CPU power to uh, analyze the large amounts of data. You know, for thousands and millions of genomes, you could do very quickly. In one word, the difference is scaling. Many of the programs are written historically. That the one of the first and earliest programs used for comparing it is called BLAST, and it's basically local alignment sequence. And what it does is that you take some sequences and you align them. And when when this was published 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago now, 1990. There were around 50 million bases of, of uh, DNA sequence at GenBank, um, and maybe a few million was added every year, every year, a few million every year. Today, we can sequence more than a billion times as much as that just in one afternoon. We can sequence trillions of base pairs every day on one machine, and and it costs you know a thousand bucks. So so technology has really changed. And now we have massive amounts of data. And the problem is that the older methods don't scale very well. They actually scale to square the size of data. Um, because mash on sampling, uh, storing very small amounts of data, it can basically do this much faster. And, and the traditional methods would take thousands of millions of years to do the same thing. The more you learn, the more you realize how ignorant we are. There's a lot of things we don't know. Uh, but by being able to quickly compare genomes, this is really important, particularly, for example, in clinical diagnostics, where you can use some of this new technology, where in an hour or two, you can take a, a person that's been infected, and you can do a sequence, and you can figure out this person has E. coli, and what particular strain of E. coli. You can tell then how dangerous is this. Some E. coli is kind of safe, and some's not so good. So then you can alert the doctor. You can also, if you know what, what type it is, you can you can help inform the doctor what type of best treatment in terms of which antibodies to use for this particular strain. 